In today's video, we will review a few questions you may be asked on the FAA Private Pilot Written Knowledge Test and Check Ride regarding flight planning and navigation. Let's jump into the questions. Question 1. What is the estimated time and route for a flight from Denton Municipal Airport in Area 1 to Addison in Area 2? The wind is from 200 degrees at 20 knots. The true airspeed is 110 knots and the magnetic variation is seven degrees east. To solve this problem, we first need to calculate the true course and distance between each airport. Using the ForeFlight app, we can use the ruler function to find the true course of 128 degrees and the distance of 22.5 nautical miles. We then need to find the ground speed given the wind conditions. We can find the ground speed using the heading and ground speed function on an E6B calculator. Using an E6B calculator, enter the wind direction of 200 degrees, the wind speed of 20 knots, the true course of 128 degrees, and the true airspeed of 110 knots to find the ground speed of 102 knots. Finally, we need to use the leg time function to find the time and route for the flight. Remember, the distance between Denton Municipal Airport and Addison was 22.5 nautical miles. Enter the distance of 22.5 nautical miles and the ground speed of 102 knots to find the estimated time and route of 13 minutes and 13 seconds. Therefore, the correct answer is A, 13 minutes, since that is the closest answer to the exact flight time of 13 minutes and 13 seconds. Question two, what is the estimated time and route from Sandpoint Airport in area one to St. Marie's Airport in area four. The wind is from 215 degrees at 25 knots and the true airspeed is 125 knots. The first step to solving this problem is to calculate the true course and distance between each airport. Using the Fort Flight app, we can use the ruler function to find the magnetic heading of 167 degrees and the distance of 58 nautical miles. If you overlay a plastic navigational plotter, you may notice that the true course reads 181 degrees. So why is the ForeFlight app reading 167 degrees? The difference between ma the magnetic heading and true course is due to the magnetic variation. 167 would be the magnetic heading and 181 degrees would be the true course. Notice the dashed red line near the bottom right hand corner of the map. This is called an isogonic line and shows the magnetic variation, which in this case is about 14 degrees. One thing to remember, magnetic variation is east is least, west is best, meaning we would need to subtract 14 degrees from the true course of 181 degrees to get the magnetic heading of 167 degrees. To find the true course of 181 degrees, just add 14 to the magnetic heading or use a plastic navigational plotter overlay on the sectional chart. We then need to find the ground speed given the wind conditions. We can find the ground speed using the heading and ground speed function on an E6B calculator. Using an E6B calculator, enter the wind direction of 215 degrees, the wind speed of 250, or the wind speed of 25 knots, the true course of 181 degrees, and the true air speed of 125 knots to find the ground speed of 103.5 knots. Finally, we need to use the leg time function to find the time and route for the flight. Remember, the distance between Sandpoint Airport and St. Marie's Airport was 58 nautical miles. Now enter the distance of 58 nautical miles and the ground speed of 103.5 knots to find the estimated time and route of about 33 minutes and 38 seconds. The correct answer is A, 34 minutes, since that is the closest answer to the exact time and route for the flight. An aircraft departs an airport in the Central Standard Time Zone at 8.45 Central Standard Time for a two-hour flight to an airport located in the Mountain Standard Time Zone. The landing should be at what coordinated universal time? Co coordinated universal time is also known as Zulu time. To solve this problem, we first need to add six hours to the departure time. Since the flight is leaving at 8.45 Central Standard Time, we would add 6 to get the Zulu departure time of 
Then add two hours of flight time to get the estimated arrival time of 1645 Zulu. Another way to solve this problem would be to add two hours to the departure time of 845. The flight would arrive at 1045 Central Standard Time. Since Mountain Standard Time is one hour behind the Central Standard Time zone, the flight would arrive at 945 Mountain Standard Time. Then add seven hours to 945 to get the arrival time of 1645 Zulu. In the Northern Hemisphere, if an aircraft is accelerated or decelerated, the magnetic compass will normally indicate. Magnetic compasses will show a turn to the north when accelerated on an east or west heading. Conversely, magnetic compasses will show a turn to the south when decelerated while on an east or west heading. One way to remember this is the phrase ANS, which means accelerated north and decelerated south. Magnetic compasses will be correct when an aircraft is accelerated or decelerated while on a north or south heading. Therefore, the correct answer is C. On a turn from a northerly heading, the compass will, according to Chapter 8 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, when starting a turn from a northerly heading, the compass will lag behind the airplane. Conversely, while on a southerly heading, the compass will lead the turn. The correct answer is C. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe for more flight training and aviation related educational videos.